Okay, so here's example one with the intermediate value theorem. So um, if you remember our discussion from the last video, um, it might have seemed kind of lengthy or kind of complicated, but um, that's just because we talked about all the details, and it's good to know all of those and go through them. But on the plus side, um, actually using the intermediate value theorem is pretty straightforward. Uh, so we only have to verify that the function is continuous and that the value of the function at these two points, uh, that the values have opposite signs. Um, okay, so f of x equals x plus sine of x minus 3x squared. Does f of x have any zeros between x equals pi over 6 and x equals pi over 2? So we just need to verify, um, is this function continuous around these values? Well, yeah, x, sine of x, and 3x squared, those are continuous everywhere. Okay, so if you add, subtract them, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you still have a continuous function. So this function is continuous everywhere, so that's great. Um, we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, now we just check, okay, what's the value of the function at these two points? So we just check f of pi over 6 equals pi over 6 plus sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half, minus uh, 3x squared, so that's 3 times pi over 6 squared. Okay, so if we just look at that, it's not really obvious whether or not it's positive, uh, you know, whether it's positive or negative, but um, we could just toss it into a calculator and we'll see that it's approximately equal to um, 0 0.201, which is positive. Okay, <clears throat> so now we just check the other value, um, f of pi over 2. f of pi over 2 equals uh, pi over 2 plus, oh, that's a pi, yikes, pi over 2, that's one ugly pi, plus sine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is just 1, and then we have minus uh, 3x squared, so minus 3 times pi over 2 quantity squared. Okay, and then again, it's not really obvious whether that's positive or negative, but we can just uh, toss it into a calculator, and we'll see that it's about to equal to negative uh, 4.831, which is less than zero. So that's great. Um, this function is continuous everywhere, and f of pi over 6 is positive, and f of pi over 2 is negative. Okay, so f of pi over 6 and f of pi over 2, they have opposite signs. This function is continuous everywhere. So the answer to the question is yes. Does f of x have any zeros between pi over 6 and pi over 2? And uh, yes, it does. Okay. Yes. Um, by the intermediate value theorem, because the intermediate value theorem tells us that. Um, so just to verify that, let's go ahead and take a look at a graph. So we'll just take a look at a graph of this real quick. So turn this on, try and zoom into it here. OK. So we're going to go to the uh, graph. All right, so our function is uh, x plus sine of x minus 3x squared. All right, and then we can go here and look at it. Now, this graph isn't very helpful, so let's change the window. So um, we're looking between pi over 6 and pi over 2. So let's make our x min pi over 6, and our x max will be pi over 2. And uh, x scale, we'll just make it 1. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Y min, let's make it negative 1. And y max will be positive 1. Uh, y scale, doesn't really matter. Uh, so now let's go back to the graph. And here we see um, the left boundary is pi over 6, and the right boundary is pi over 2. And we see that in between these values, um, there is a 0 right over here. Now, the intermediate value theorem doesn't tell us what it is, but that's OK. We, the only um, thing we wanted to know was whether or not there is a 0. Okay, or if there are any at all. Um, and the intermediate value theorem tells us, yes, uh, there is at least one. And the graph verifies it here. So there it is. Between pi over 6 and pi over 2, there is uh, one zero here. Okay, so that's example one with the intermediate value theorem.